Good morning, folks. We've got four science stories for you today, including the newest study of how Earth's electrical grids will fare against a super flare. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We see the departure of the equatorial coronal hole, another one incoming on the south. Several bright active regions, but no bigger flares. We expected a ramp up in the solar wind due to a coronal hole stream and possible small CME impact. Telemetry on the rise the last 12 hours and should remain above average today. No geomagnetic storm effects at this early stage. Folks, we've been watching the northern sunspots, but they were disappointing and spread. This morning, you can see dark spots developing all around the leading edge. All those new little dark spots appeared today and we'll be monitoring their development and any potential flaring. We'll also be keeping an eye on the south as well. It appears we've got more incoming down there. Let's start with the tornadoes in the article front. Last six decades of data have been analyzed and they found an overall trend upward in the tornado occurrences, but this was not uniform across the Fujita scale. The increase is found as a bigger increase in F1 tornadoes, while the larger ones have actually gone down in frequency. A short skip sideways to climate model still struggling to accurately describe atmospheric dynamics, and when you add in ocean dynamics, you begin to find where their models don't recreate reality just like with the attribution and forecasting studies. Interesting one here on poleward traveling ionospheric disturbances, we have been largely focused on the equatorward traveling waves from auroral excitement and have gone over the equatorial excitement upon CME impact from electrodynamic activity, penetrating fields and particles. But this is an excitement of the equatorial electrojet and poleward traveling waves in the peak and recovery phase of the storm well after CME impact, and it's not the direct triggering by the solar wind coupling, that prefers the poles. Two means to excite that electrojet at the peak and recovery phase of the storm are the meeting of those aurorally driven equatorward traveling waves. They do meet at the tropics and plume up at the equatorial ion fountain, and also the ring currents excited at the polar region and Van Allen belts do have excellent opportunities to induce that tropical current as well. No part of the earth is unaffected. And if that's not the introduction to our final story, you can't write one better. Major detail study on some of the most important grids shows it doesn't matter if you're at high latitude or low latitude. The power grids are probably not going to be able to handle a superstorm. Remember that humans have gotten very lucky to just begin our electric age in the time since the last 200-year solar flare event back in 1859. Since then, we've not had anything close to that, but we know they come in these cycles, and that this next one is actually the harmonic at the larger time scales. FYI, the normal grid collapse scenario would be somewhere around the 200 year event, but with Earth's weakening magnetic field, it won't even take that now and over the coming years. Not the time to be due for one of the bigger millennial scale events, but that's why we're here watching. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got pressure and precipitation wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.